You know, um, guys, as I uh, record this video, allow me just to get this off the chest because this video is most certainly long overdue. It's been long overdue, and I just haven't uh, really batted an eyelash towards it. I haven't really cared to touch upon it because, you know, I just felt like I didn't need to. But um, since some people want to ask this question, right, and I know a lot of people probably look over here, they'll look at my videos, they'll look at the history on this channel, <laughs> from debates to everything, right, from podcasts, even before we got into the new podcast and such and such, a lot of people are going to go here and go, oh, Ryan's one of those channels. Okay. So let me go ahead and uh, break this down. Is there a vendetta against Microsoft? Do people hate Microsoft? Do people just downright not like the platform at all? Well, there are people who don't like Microsoft at all. There are people who do not want Microsoft to succeed. There are people who legit want Microsoft to fail. I'm not one of them, but there are people like that. Just like there are people who want the same thing to happen to Sony, and there are people who want the exact same thing to happen to Nintendo. It goes all sides. But one thing is for certain, one thing's for certain, this, gen this whole console generation, this generation, will go down as probably one of the weirdest console generations of all time. From mid-gen refresh consoles to people arguing about developers putting in extra work in video games i mean the list goes on <laughs> us you know what i'm saying us over here paying for save slots from konami <laughs> being charged for endings i mean the list the list really goes on for a lot of weird stuff but to stay on track when it comes to microsoft and the xbox brand one thing I've always said, especially if you go back to my very first video where I literally start going off at times. You see, back when this channel first even started, right? When I first started doing this channel and I started doing my news and everything of that nature, I literally covered everything. I covered Microsoft, PlayStation, and of course, Nintendo uh, news on this channel. And one thing was constant and it was weird to me. I would get good comments from PlayStation dudes saying, hey, that's a good theory. Good job, man. Congratulations. I like that. Hey, congratulations on 50 subs type of thing, right? Nintendo dudes, they was like, eh, I don't really agree all the way, but I do like that type of thing. I was like, hey, cool. But when it came to Microsoft and me talking about news, and no, this was no criticism or anything of that nature. I was just like, yeah, I like this. I like that. But I kind of wish that they'd do this type of thing. I would get hit with some of the most toxic comments of all time. I would. And when I look back at that, and then I just look back at me going after him, you know what I'm saying, me dropping video after video, you know, building the name that I have here, it's just, uh, it comes back full circle, basically, and I look at it, and it's like, hmm, is there a vendetta against Microsoft? No, it's not a vendetta. You see, the problem with Microsoft, really, the real problem with Microsoft is Microsoft. It's not the Xbox brand, but it's Microsoft in general. You have Microsoft executives telling their very own consumers who run around and take everything they say to heart. A lot of these dudes believe that you do not need exclusives in the future. A lot of people believe that you do not need games at all in terms of being only on that platform. Some people believe that it's all about multiplats because of these damn developers or these executives. I'm sorry, you know. And this type of mentality is all thanks to Microsoft, believe it or not. It's all thanks to Microsoft. For Microsoft to tell you that, you know, exclusives, you know, don't necessarily matter to us. Obviously, the fans are going to catch on to that and go with that and go, well, if they believe exclusives don't matter, then why should I care that exclusives matter? Well, it's very simple. It's all about it. incentive. When you have three different platforms on the market and they all had the exact same games, and I'm talking about third party, and we do not have games like Uncharted, we don't have the Gears of Wars, and we don't have the Marios, right? Those games don't exist, and we just have third party games. What exactly separates these platforms? Now, right off the bat, some of you might go, well, what separates the Switch is the portable aspect, and that's true. And when it comes to Sony and Microsoft, you know, somebody just will go, well, the graphics are better on this one. But that's pretty much it. Nothing necessarily uh, separates them. None of them necessarily have their own identity. It's like, here's this one, here's this one, and here's this one that you can conveniently take on the go. That's it. You need the first party talent 
to separate you and to make sure that you have a you know an impact on the market and that's what sony and nintendo understand they've always understood this microsoft they understood this heavily at the start of this generation but as you clearly saw that deteriorated especially with the whole drm debacle it all deteriorated and we're now here you know, after all the theories, after all the predictions, everything of that nature, we're now here and Microsoft is now, well, look at them. They're now a service. Microsoft is trying so hard to reach more gamers by being a third party service in a sense with the Xbox, as opposed to being a dominant force like they were with the Xbox 360. The Xbox 360 was one of the best consoles of all time. Had one of the best controllers of all time. But even with the 360, the 360, you know, all the fame they got from that, right? The name they built, right? Everything they built. Even with the 360, we're, hit, we're still sitting here and we're basically back to square one when it comes to this uh, platform. Microsoft has everything at their disposal. They have the resources. They got the tools. The Xbox One X is definitely a great console. The problem with the Xbox One X, and everybody who owns one will tell you, the problem with the Xbox One X is the fact that it just doesn't have the software. If the Xbox One X had the software and the games that really did push that hardware to the limit, we will be not saying the shit that we're saying now. Microsoft will be on a different type of tune, I promise you, if they had the games that really did push that platform. But that's the problem with Microsoft. They don't have the tools, man, or they don't have the um, they don't necessarily have the force out here in these streets to push the market in the direction that they want. They don't have that. They don't. And for some people that want to just bank on this whole service thing, guys, listen, 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 listen. It's excited. It's exciting to be excited for a new console. It's cool to be excited for a PS5. It's great to be excited for a new Xbox and hell, even a new Nintendo product, right? It's fine. It's natural. But for you to say that I'm super excited for this streaming service, right? And I really want this. And you got dudes really banking so much on the whole service module saying that Microsoft doing X amount of things. X, uh, Microsoft's going to be X amount of things because of this. I want you to take a good deep breath. And look back at what happened yesterday. That's going to be the future of an always connected world that basically we're heading in. The moment a server fucks up, they're going to have problems like that. When you don't have access to nothing. That is a very simple formula right there. That's the truth though. The moment a server fucks up, you'll be right there. And for some people that might go, well, Ryan, it's not going to be like that with the PS5 or the new Xbox because, you know, the system is smart. It will fix itself. That's true. That's for now. You know what I'm saying? They're going to, like, the, the way they're going about it, it's like you turning a screw. You're slowly going to turn that screw. You're slowly going to get people adjusted to the pressure to eventually where you can turn it even faster and push that agenda even further. That's what they want. That's the direction gaming is heading. Gaming is heading in a direction where we're always going to be connected, we're going to be on servers, and we're going to be stuck, basically, with these consoles in a particular way. We're not going to necessarily have control of our games, nor are we going to have ownership of our games, because our games are not going to belong to us. They're basically going to be licensing keys, kind of like how you buy shit off of iTunes. You guys remember that? Remember what happens when you buy shit off of iTunes? Now, who's to say that Sony and Microsoft wouldn't go down that route if this really took off? If Sony and Microsoft really did take off with this whole streaming service and Google especially, right? And Google became a big competitor. With them having these games and X amount of things and them, and them treating it like an iTunes service where you're actually putting in more, like you're basically buying them off the store and they're on their, um, on their end and you get the license. And let's say they say that PSN is still required, Xbox Live is still required for online, right? The moment your Xbox Live and your PSN expires, what do you think happens to those licenses? They deactivate and you have no access. I'm pretty sure that's the route that they will go. If they can control the market like that, they'll force you behind this paywall shit to where you will be forced to pay them just to access your game. And before somebody goes, Ryan, that's, a, that's absurd. There's no way they will go that route. They're already charging you for online for dumb reasons as we speak. 
That's the truth. You know? Microsoft charging you online for free to play games. I mean, you don't think they would charge you just for the ownership of your games, period? You don't think they would lock in Xbox Live Gold behind the whole streaming thing? That's the problem with an always connected console and an always connected world. Do I hate any particular brand? No. But I refuse to sit back here and make excuses for any particular brand. Me sitting here behind this microphone talking to you, right? Me sitting here lying and saying that, oh, it's not a big deal, guys. You know, you know, they got to do this. They got to start with this. They got to do that, right? That's not helping the situation. You got to be vocal if you want change. You got to be vocal if you want things to be better. That's just the blatant facts. That's not hate. And some of these dudes who claim this hate, half these dudes are mentally challenged and have serious mental problems. You don't believe me? There's a, actually, I'm not going to say dude's name, but he knows who he is. This dude lives in the comment sections of everybody's videos. Every time somebody puts up a PlayStation video, every time this somebody puts up an Xbox video, he's there talking trash. And you know what's sad about him? He was on Twitter, and he tried to do the exact same thing on Twitter. And I think that account got deactivated pretty fast by Twitter. Because, see, Twitter don't play around. You know what I'm saying? Twitter don't play around. YouTube, they kind of let you get away with certain things. But, again, when I always connect the world, expect a lot of freedoms like that to go as well. <laughs> expect it. I know a lot of people laugh at YouTubers who pull out trolling videos, right? Them Call of Duty like videos. You really think you're going to be seeing trolling slash Call of Duty videos in an always connected world with these consoles? No. It's going to be like your cable box. What happens when you don't pay your bill with your cable box? They send a signal. Your cable box, defective. Does not work until you pay up. There's going to be some shit like that and play with this always connected world, man. It's going to be some shit like that. So... I'm not a fan of the always connected world. And I'm not saying this because I'm angry or anything like that. No, I'm just being upfront. I know a lot of people wanted me to talk on this, so here it is. And it's not just me. You guys saw it. Go watch RDX Podcast. You heard it yourself, man. You can heard it from anybody. Even D-Batch just say the same thing I'm saying. Like, listen, Microsoft needs to step it up. And that's the truth. They do need to step it up. There's no more excuses of like, oh, we invested in this, that, and the third, and it's a wait-and-see approach. And even I say we do have to wait and see because that's literally the only option we got right now is to wait and see, right? But still, the whole wait-and-see argument just really, I don't know what to say about it. It's just like we, we've, been, we, we've had this argument in front of us since 2013. Tell you the truth. We've had this argument since 2013. Wait and see. We got to wait and see how this whole DRM thing plays out. We got to wait and see how the Xbox One next or the uh, actually the Project Scorpio does against the PS4 Pro. We got to wait and see how the Xbox One X affects the market when it launches on this day. You know what I'm saying? It's so many things we have to wait to see to see. And I'm tired of it, man. It's either you're going to show me or you're going to shut up about it. That's how I feel about it now. And the fact that we got a new generation that's getting ready to pick up and start, or technically that's picking up and getting ready to start very soon, I, I don't know what to say, people. I don't know what to say. I love gaming, and I've always loved gaming, but I refuse to sit here and tell you that I'm okay with half the shit that I've seen on YouTube. I'm not. I'm not. From people using racism in gaming, from people attacking people's jobs and families, uh, people have them behind stock accounts just to false flag people. I mean, I'm not okay with it. I'm not. But this is the gaming community that we're in now. A lot of these people will rather talk about drama than talk about video games. A lot of these people will rather hate on one particular side than talk about video games. And a video game community, mind you. <laughs> so that's just the truth. Is there hate towards Microsoft? No. There's no hate towards Microsoft. The problem, or there's no hate towards Xbox, but as far as Microsoft's concerned, Microsoft has a lot of questions that they need to answer. And sadly, they have an answer for a lot of people. So, of course, people are going to act a certain way. Do I hate Microsoft or Xbox brand? No. What I want from Microsoft is the same thing that I've said last night and I've always preached in my videos. 
I want competition. And I remember I got called out and called many things because I said that I want competition. I'm talking about from Xbox dudes. Why do you care about Microsoft investing in this? Why should it matter to you? Because if Microsoft invests in this, it puts pressure on Sony and it keeps Sony on track to invest in the proper things and it keeps Sony on track to deliver the best they can possibly deliver for the market so that everybody benefits. That's why I care about that. Sony releasing Uncharted 4, right? What do you think that should inspire Microsoft to do with Gears of War or whatever new uh, titles that they got, right? It should it should inspire them to invest in something of that caliber or to do something out the box like Uncharted 4. And, you know, impress us. Do something great. Do I need to continue? Look at God of War. God of War is completely different from any God of War that we've ever gotten. It is simply amazing. But that game didn't just happen at the snap of a finger like, like that. No, that game happened because of feedback. That game happened. The reason why that game looks like that is because people spoke up. They know what they want. They want a great looking game. And guess what? They're going to get that. Oh, that's what they got. I'm sorry. And that game, by many people's standards, is game of the year. Will it be game of the year? Only time will tell. But we're not there yet. But we shall see. So, from this point forward, man, going into next gen and all that shit, I'm just keeping it real with you. I told you from the start. And now that everything has been proven right by yours truly, right? Everything that's been <laughs> confirmed by uh, that I've said by Microsoft. Um, I don't know what to say to y'all, but hey, I don't hold no grudges. You know what I'm saying? I don't hold no grudges. But my wish for all of you, especially on the Xbox side, PlayStation side, and Nintendo especially, just be gamers, man, and speak up, for God's sakes. Speak up to avoid our very hobby turning into something that it should not be. That's all I ask. You know, it's, that's literally all I ask. But unfortunately, some people don't want to do that. Some people think that they know it all and, oh, you should shut up. You shouldn't say this, that, and the third. And then they look dumb when it blows up in their face. And that is the God honest truth. So that's all I got to say on the topic, man. I know I haven't touched on the Xbox slash topic. I know. But the reason why I haven't touched on the Xbox topic is because I've said it all. I don't necessarily need to talk about an Xbox topic like this. I don't. I'd rather talk about news, to be honest with you, to be upfront, And I should be keeping it 100. I'd rather talk about news <laughs> than talk about the drama. But that is the truth, though. So there you go. If you guys liked the video, hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike. Follow me on Twitter at RyanThePro55. Like the video especially, definitely hit that subscribe button if you want to stick around and see more of the content here on the channel. Hit the bell icon stay up to date. Um, without further ado, though, that's it. So I got to see on the subject. I think I've uh, hit it on the, um, I, hit the, I hit the nail on the head, basically. And um, I got nothing else to say. I don't. All right. So y'all be blessed. Y'all be easy. I'm out of here. Deuces.